And today, my talk, the talk you chose, is about the Google Cloud Public Datasets program. So you might be familiar with Google Cloud. You might know all of the many of the tools we offer. If you don't know them, uh, I'll show you these tools again. And my goal here is to show you what we are doing forward with public data. How do we make it more accessible, more usable, uh, drive more insights from it? I'm Felipe Hoffa. You can find me on Twitter. I've been at Google for almost six years. Uh, I started as a software engineer, and I became a developer advocate around three years ago. This shirt is from the first time I spoke at Google I.O., and I'm still here, so that's cool. Um, so this talk is about open data, uh, and we want to go beyond availability. Making data available, leaving it somewhere is not enough. We need the best tools to share and work with data. Uh, the state of the art before when, if you wanted to download, let's say, the weather for last year, you would find an FTP server. This is a known FTP server. Uh, try to connect, try to find files there. This one is 100 megabyte files with all of the weather for 2016. And that's nice. You can download, access that data. But we want more. Because once we download this file, uh, what do we do with it? How do we extract insights? Where do we install it? Why do we even have to do this? Especially with big data sets. Uh, as data sets get bigger and bigger and bigger, um, things, uh, it's not that easy to download and install it on our own computers. And the most interesting direction we're going now, uh, I'm really excited, is how do we work with live data sets? Let's say you need to send millions of messages in real time, you want to publish uh, in real time, then we will be able to help you to do that kind of sharing. But I'll come back to that later. Uh, open data, they are, it impacts so many sectors. It's in so many places. It's not only civic data. It's not only comments. We have agriculture, art, uh, business, consumer, education. The, I could go on and on and on. There are so many fields that benefit from this, including health, uh, just being able to share uh, terabytes of genome data that's been used to fight cancer and other um, health problems. It's really, really, it's, it's a really impactful place to be working in. Um, going back in time, just I love uh, sharing a little bit of what companies built on public data do you know? Hmm? Ways? Well, kind of public data, it's, but Google. I like that answer because uh, if you go back to 1996, uh, when there were a lot of search companies, search was sold. Uh, we know all of this, or at if you were back there, back then searching on the internet, you had to go through all of them trying to find whatever you wanted, page number 10. It was hard, it was hard. And they were all looking at the same data the public web. They were all collecting the web, uh, ranking the results on the best way possible, and serving it from the biggest server that we find, would find. But then in 1998, Google shows up. It looks at the same data. It's the same web pages. But instead of looking only at the content of each web page, uh, Google starts looking at the relationships between them, uh, the page rank algorithm. And what I'm trying to show here is that uh, with a new idea, PageRank, uh, just with the same data, uh, collecting the whole web, and with a new um, generation of technology. Uh, the technology that Google used was pretty different to what everyone else was doing at the time. At the time, everyone was trying the biggest server possible. Google had new technology ideas, and you could do the same. How do we empower your ideas with more data, uh, how do we make, instead of having to collect all this data, how can we collect it for you? How can we share the technology that we have created with you? And to empower whatever your next ideas are, because that's what changes the world. Uh, Google, on the technology side, we've created, we, at first, we published many of the papers that uh, revolutionized the, the big data world, the 
the internet as we know today. So it all started with the file system, the Google file system, being able to store uh, unlimited gigabytes of data. And then MapReduce, this idea on how we, do we move computing instead of having it on one computer, orchestrating it on thousands of them of cheaper computers. And so many other papers that, on the last few years, we've been translating that to, to a world where, instead of sharing papers, we share the same technology that we're using. Uh, all of these papers, you can access them now as Google Cloud products. You might have been using some of them. And the last one, on this one, it's public now. It's available now. You can use Spanner, too. But I'm going to focus on other products here that allows us to share and analyze data. Um, now, we, when we think about open data, there's a lot of different ways data can be shared. It's not only structured data, CSVs, spreadsheets, etc. You can also have unstructured data, text, annotations, DNA, uh, images, uh, just petabytes of satellites, pictures, uh, sky, etc., etc. This all requires different tools. Um, we don't want to be another open data portal. Today, there are more than 500 data portals all around the world. Um, and this is one that was being counted by open knowledge, just the civic data. But there are, so, there are so many portals. We don't want to replace them. They are all doing an amazing job. We want to empower. We want to help where we can help, where we can make things different. Um, to give you an example, Stack Exchange has their own portal for with the Stack Overflows data. So here you can find questions. You can find the queries people can use. You can run your own queries, and they let you run your queries on their server. And it's really cool. You can find the, it's a great place to share, to learn, to analyze, to understand. It's fast, it's easy, it's cool. But it has some limitations. Because at the end of the day, we're using their server that has limitations. So they have to impose those limitations on us too. Uh, the max number of rows you can output. Uh, they don't have an API. They don't allow robots, robots in. Uh, queries sometimes time out. And you cannot mix your own data. It's their server. You don't want to upload data to their server. So in cases like this, we can really help. We can uh, go past these limitations. Um, when you're sharing data, too many users would be a problem, too many questions, too many indexes. Uh, the ability to run any kind of question is, is one of the things we can offer. And especially the cost model. Because sharing one server, sharing your own servers, uh, can become an expensive um, endeavor. And then with the tools I'm going to show you, you are able to share data without bearing the cost of the analysis. Uh, with BigQuery, with PubSub, uh, the model here is that the person doing the analysis can pay for their own analysis, so it doesn't uh, impact your own ability to share. Um, so we can create a sharing platform to, to help with bigger data sets, with streaming data sets. Uh, we can bring flexibility, like no indexes needed for, for sharing, or if you have a stream of data, just help with all of the security and without needing to configure anything. Uh, you can bring your own data. People that want to mix public data sets with their own private data sets, they can do everything in the same platform. They can scale in a serverless way. Don't worry about servers anymore. You can distribute the cost. And we can also act as Google as a data provider. We, with the public data set program, we want to do sh uh, help bringing data in, cleaning the data so it could be, can be analyzed in time. Um, so this is the Google Cloud Public Dataset Program, the, what we are been, have been working for the last year, just setting it up. Um, when I started working in this role, I, started, I got a lot of data sets. Any da big data set that I could find, I put it into BigQuery. I shared it with people. I shared an article. But that was a one-man job. Uh, right now, we have a team, we have a formal program that's helping do the same, but do it in a productionized matter, have these data sets updated, have everything coming together. So some benefits from the public data set program are that 
if you contact us, you, we can give you free hosting and credit. For if you want to share data, we can help you with that. Uh, we can help you setting up a pipeline to update the, these data sets every day, every hour, uh, where, however we need. And we can provide documentation on Cloud Google Com. That's really good for people that are looking to work with this data. BigQuery has a free, free tier, uh, one terabyte of monthly query quota for everyone. So if you share data on BigQuery, anyone can come and analyze these uh, data sets at no cost, up to a limit. But then if they want to do much more, they are able to. Uh, we also added a pub. Uh, so we, we are added a whole free tier now for many other products, and that was an announcement that I couldn't have on this last time. Uh, with BigQuery and PubSub, you can distribute costs, you can make things serverless, you can make them open. I'm going to show you BigQuery and PubSub in a few slides. And you just want to enable people to do, uh, to combine data sets, to bring new insights, to go beyond analysis, to use it with machine learning, etc. So with this, I love jumping into demo time because uh, you might already know these products, but just seeing them in use, it's my favorite part. Uh, who knows BigQuery? OK, a lot of scans, nice. Now the other half will get to meet it too. Uh, BigQuery is our serverless way of analyzing data. It analyzes terabytes in seconds. You can you see just by knowing SQL. It scales from bytes to petabytes. Uh, there's nothing to turn on. There's no investment necessary. It's just working all the time. Uh, it will work with many other tools, with Tableau, R, Python, Looker, pa, pa, pa. Uh, there has a REST API, JDBC connector, ODBC connector. And the most interesting part is, uh, is for me and for this talk is being able to share data instantly and giving the free quota to, for everyone. And just to give you some demos of these are some of the data sets that we have loaded on the public data sets program and that we are keeping updated. So for example, let me jump to the New York City taxis. Anyone knows how many taxi rides there are in New York every month or every year? Any guess? Six million taxi rides in New York every month? More, yes. W way more. Oh, well, yes, way more. Okay. I, I know the number for every year, but I need to divide it by 10. Um, so I have this all loaded in BigQuery. I'm sharing here New York public data taxi trips from 2009 to 2016. And I know where to find this, but normally people don't know where to find how to end, come here. So if I was looking for taxi data set on BigQuery, uh, we are now offering the page with documentation with, that talks about what's this data set, how frequently do we update it. And we have sample queries. So for example, let's look at the average speed of yellow taxi trips in 2015. First, let's, let me answer the other question. This table for 2015 it has many columns. And if we look at the details, in 2015, New York City saw 146 million taxi rides. That's a pretty big number. It's bigger than eight. Well, if we multiply by 12, it's, it gets closer. Yeah, you were, you were close. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if we want to write queries, we, we can write simple queries like, oh, let me query this table, select, count, star. That's a simple one. 145 million. But then with, uh, we're able to share queries with BigQuery. Like we're not only sharing the data set. Anyone can tell, come and tell you, hey, this is an interesting query that you can run, that you can modify, that you can uh, go and explore further. Uh, I, I have to escape the name of this table. And in this case, for example, we are looking at the average speed of taxis in New York during last year per hour. And I also had to do some cleanup. This data, there's no data set that is really clean. So to look at data, for data to make sense, here I'm applying a, 
a ratio that looks that the fair amount divided by the trip distance is in some normal range of values. And that's why how I can tell these rows are valid. They're approximately 90% of the rows. But that allows me to get results that make sense instead of uh, averaging um, uh, meaningless data. So yep, here I can see the speed of taxis. Uh, at 5 a.m., they go at 20 miles per hour, approx. But then at 8 a.m., they go down to 11 miles per hour. And then that's pretty constant for the rest of the day. You don't get a speed change. And, and now we are able to see it. But then if we wanted to ask questions like, oh, what about if we do it by year? And we look at every year between now and two thousand between 2009 and 2016. It's, we can come sh uh, change the query. Instead of looking at one table, I can look at every table. Here I processed 37 gigabytes in four seconds. And we can see quickly see the results. The speed of taxi rides uh, has go been going down from 2009 to 13.5 to 2008. 12.8 miles per hour in 2016. So New York is getting slower. And if you were wondering how many rows did we just query, let me just to brag, let me make a count star of how many rows I looked into. Uh, this is a pretty handy just being able to star all the tables. Uh, these were 1.2 billion taxi rides analyzed in almost no time. That is cool. Uh, just to show you another other data sets, we also have the New York City bike trips. People in New York are biking from place to place. I can run similar analysis. If I find my table, these are the bike rides. I have them for San Francisco too, but in New York, here are my trips. And I have around 33 million taxi rides, well that, not taxi rides, uh, bike trips. And I can also start querying them and looking, for example, um, let's ask any question I have with the trip duration. So for example, I could look at the average trip duration per year, uh, start time. The average trip duration, I can group by one, order by two, group, group by year, order by the year, and this didn't work as I wanted because this is standard SQL, and I hit for standard SQL, I do extract year, from start time. If you've been using BigQuery for a long while, BigQuery had its own SQL dialect. That was pretty convenient, but not standard. And now we support standard SQL, which is really cool. So we can see here for the last four years that the average duration of a bike trip in New York is around more than 15 minutes. And what's really cool with BigQuery is when we start thinking about how to combine data sets, how we can take the uh, billion taxi trip rides, take the, all these million bike trips, and think about, hey, are, for example, cars faster than bikes? Or are bikes faster than cars? Any guess? Cars should be faster. Well, and bikes might be faster, because it's a city. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. Exactly, at 11 miles per hour. So just to prove it and to have the real data proving this, I wrote a query that I will copy paste because it's a long query. So with this query, I'm, look, I'm going to see, look at the most popular uh, bike rides, starting point, end point, and then I wrote that one not with standard SQL. Um, 
what are the most popular bike rides, uh, starting point, ending point. I'm going to look at all of the taxi trips that started in similar positions and do some and look at it only between, what did I say, between 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. because it's unfair to compare it at 5 a.m. when bikes are f uh, taxis are at its fastest. So there's a lot of trips, 4,600 trips, starting in Pershing Square, ending at 36th Street. And in, with the, a bike, it took eight minutes. With a taxi, it took 10. And now I'm proving with real data that, yes, these bikes are faster than all of the average taxi ride. And just being able to look at this, uh, combine it, run a join between two huge data sets in 11 seconds, and being able to share this query. Uh, you can take the query that I just wrote and start changing its parameters to find wherever you want to find. Taxis are not faster always, but I still have to build that visualization to share it with you. We have other data sets, uh, not only from civic life. Um, for GitHub, we have not only every event that is happening on GitHub, we are also have all the source code on GitHub that's open source that we found. We've also put it on the query. So that's an unstructured data. Source code is just big test files that we can also analyze with BigQuery. And a test I ran recently was tabs versus spaces. I don't know, anyone has seen it? Uh, tabs or spaces? Tabs? Okay, spaces? Good. Let me look at, let me get you the right number. Tabs versus spaces. This is the post I published, but I want to run it live. So first I extracted uh, all of the, I looked at the top 400,000 GitHub repositories and I extracted the uh, files from the top 13 languages. Uh, this took like 10 minutes just to extract from process 1.6 terabytes of code. And then I was, that is really more than, so as we deduplicate files, this is more like uh, 14 terabytes of code these files represent. And with this query, I'm looking at the extension. I will look by extension. I will look to see if the line starts with a tab or a space, if files have more tabs or more spaces. Uh, I'll count it depending if it has more tabs or spaces. Files with at least 10 lines. Pa -pa -pa -pam. I set up my rules. I bring my query here and let's run it. Ooh, that was fast because I had it catch. But if you want to see how long it takes, let's not use catch results. Uh, but no, while it runs, it will take about 10 seconds. But I have my results here. Uh, that I also want to visualize, just to see who won. It took 14 seconds to do it again. So I can easily uh, save it on a Google Sheet. There are a lot of tools to visualize, but I will use Google Sheets. And this is my fastest way to get something into a chart. Tabs versus spaces. It doesn't look that good, so let me do a little change. Let me copy this here. Um, so I want to reproduce how I did this famous chart now. I just want to make these numbers negative, the tabs. Tabs. No. What, what did I do here? Minus one, multiply by this. I can make it go negative. Copy. Now it's negative. Let's draw a chart. Insert chart. Horizontal is prettier. Let me stack it. And boom. This is the famous chart I created between comparing tabs and spaces. And, and it doesn't take much time to go and do it if you know. Uh, what you want, is exploring is all the fun part. But you can see, in case you were wondering, that in most languages, starting with Java on the top one, 
Most people are doing spaces. In C, it's around 50-50, but in every language, spaces is what's winning right now, except in Go. If you are writing Go, that's where you can keep your tabs and no one will take them away from you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, how are we doing on time? What? Um, I have been working with other data sets. Uh, we also have a Stack Overflow. We are able to look at all the questions that people have asked on Stack Overflow. What are the top languages? What are the top tabs? Hacker News, that's really cool. Uh, and what we started doing yesterday with Hacker News, in case you had been looking at this data set, now we are updating it daily. So for if including yesterday, I can look at all of 30 million posts on Hacker News. And to give you a demo, let's look, for example, at the URLs. Count. Let's look at the top domains that people share on Hacker News. Uh, regex match, my domain is from my URL. I can do a regular expression that will look at how do we find a domain? Everything that is not a slash between slashes, not a star, pa pa pa. Count star. And group again. And guess what's the top domains uh, shared on Hacker News? Do you read Hacker News? So just for the last six years, true or false? Extract where URL is not as empty. So the top domain here is github.com, Medium. People are sharing a lot of Medium posts on Hacker News, a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of TechCrunch posts. There is something strange with my URL. Oh, sometimes Hacker News doesn't include the like the slash. But yes, people share a lot of GitHub URLs, Medium, YouTube, TechCrunch, New York Times. But this is what people are sharing, not really what people are looking. So if we look at score having at least 30 upvotes on Hacker News. Uh, now, GitHub is still on top, but the New York Times is really, really appreciated by uh, Hacker News readers, TechCrunch, Medium is further down, Ars Technica, if you can remember it. And yeah, we can start playing with this. I, I really want to share uh, these results as soon as possible because I wasn't able to share a look uh, up to yesterday with, with this data set until now. Um, now we also have weather. I, 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 want, I will just show you quickly this post that Reto wrote uh, on how do we combine all of the New York City taxi data with weather. We have all of the weather worldwide weather that's shared by NOAA, we have it in BigQuery, so you can start combining it with your own data sets and start looking at, oh, do people behave differently when it's warm, when it's raining, when it's cold? Uh, weather has a huge impact on what's happening with your own apps, with your own businesses, and just being able to run queries like this and start, that's the TLC one, where is my, Ah, here. Uh, here we share, Reto shared this whole post on looking at the effect of weather on New York, and you can just come here to BigQuery, bring your queries, and start uh, analyzing them. Let me continue. Let's get past BigQuery. Let's talk a little bit about uh, how do we process image data. With uh, Landsat, we are, for example, sharing more than 14 petabytes of satellite images, and being able to analyze them is not easy either, uh, classically. But we, we we're working to make these things easier. You might have seen Dataflow and Datalab in a 
in uh, different talks. If not, please go, and they're really amazing. This is a re I, I won't go in all detail with this, but I just want to show you the challenge of looking, for example, uh, what Lack was doing here is creating a monthly vegetation index. Let's see how vegetation is growing or going down in each country, place, uh, area. And that this is not an easy problem in theory. You have to look at thousands of satellite images. You have to find the least cloudy one. You have to compute the normalized difference between certain binds to see how much green do you have in your pictures. But Lack was he capable, could write a pipeline that looks into these images, filters them, and finds the least cloudy in three lines of data flow code. Of course, this, each of these methods that's, is more complex. It does the operation needed. But just to bring it to, to make it run at scale, to uh, be in a make, uh, being able to analyze all of this data in parallel, orchestrated by a serverless framework like Dataflow, uh, it just took three lines of Python code. Um, you can see the rest of the post of how he's taking these images, analyzing them, and just getting results without having to take care of much of this. Um, this is a screenshot of data flow on how it just takes these three lines of code and makes um, uh, a workflow that's run by cloud, by Google Cloud, uh, or other open source systems like Flink or Spark, uh, because Apache data flow. So Google Cloud Dataflow has now the Beam API SDK, which is, a, is an Apache API, which runs not only on Dataflow, but on other systems, too. But there are some other talks that will go deeper into that. Um, who has worked with PubSub? Yes. PubSub is uh, our solution for distributing messages in real time as our queue system. Um, with it, I'm able to produce messages. Uh, if, let's say this example is from an IoT talk. If you have to distribute messages from uh, devices and send it to many subscribers, with PubSub, you can do just that. Uh, your data producers can send messages to PubSub. PubSub is always ready to consume them. There's nothing to configure. Um, then you can have as many subscribers as you need getting uh, each of these messages in almost real time and all managed, uh, managed magically by Google. Um, and the good news for us, why I'm talking about password in this talk, is because it also has a share. You can also share your PubSub data sets publicly. So if you are need to publish that in real time, you can send it here, you can set it as public, and then anyone that needs to ingest this data in real time can do it. Uh, we saw an example on the keynote this morning. Let me show you quickly that example. This is basically how uh, I will come back to this. I want to show you the, this is from the New York City Code Lab that we are running, we run. So in this case, uh, the problem we wanted to solve here is what happens if New York wanted to publish all of their taxi rides in real time? They are not publishing them right now for various reasons. But if they wanted, how would they be able to do so? Uh, so we took all of the historical New York City taxi data, and we started publishing on a public PubSub feed. And then anyone with PubSub can subscribe. Here we created a web page to do so. You can subscribe to this any of the public topics. I have a the simulated feed of taxi rides in real time. And I can just start fetching them as a consumer. And just start just visualizing them. In this case, for this example, we are running this is around a fourth. 4,000 messages per second. Yeah, I'm right now receiving 2,000 data points per second and just displaying them. Um, the, the message here, uh, the, the, the main concept behind this demo is 
being able to share messages in real time at scale without managing anything. And you can go a step further with Dataflow that I just, we were just talking about. Uh, with Dataflow, you could take that, those messages in real time and create a processing system uh, capable of transforming these elements, windowing them, uh, doing whatever operation you have to do, and then publish either to another PubSub feed, uh, publish to BigQuery, publish to files, um, just making your open data sets, your real-time data sets available for everyone. Um, I don't have many public data sets to share right now in, the, in real time in this program, but I'm really looking forward to work with whoever is ready and has been feeling this problem of how to share data in real time. Um, I'm started with GitHub. So, so, for example, how do we get from GitHub every event that is happening in GitHub in real time so you could subscribe? And the GH Torrent project is helping us there. Um, a little, a couple more demos um, from the open source world because people always ask me, show me that you can do this with not only inside the query, with, with open source software. Uh, who has worked with Apache Zeppelin? No. Okay, good. So with, with Google, you, you are able to run Apache Zeppelin inside Dataproc. I launched my cluster some minutes ago. Let me see if I can connect to it. So basically, I launched, launched a cluster. Yep, it's there. If you want to launch a cluster, you say, hey, Dataproc, create a cluster with this initialization action that will run Zeppelin. And once it's up, in a couple of minutes, you can connect to it. Uh, I just created an SSH tunnel. Here is my Zeppelin notebook. And Zeppelin can now connect to BigQuery. I have my uh, interpreters here. BigQuery here. And I just need to tell it, basically, this is my project ID. Um, with that, I can start creating notebooks and connect it to BigQuery. Let me see. Uh, let's run a query that we have already run. For example, what are the most popular biking stations? I can copy paste here. Ah, so when we document this, we need to escape. Yeah, so these are the most popular bike stations. The most popular ha ha has had 300,000 trips. And we can just interact and bring it to different platforms. Or whatever is our favorite platform to analyze data, we just we are able to sh connect BigQuery to Tada, the most popular. Uh, it doesn't look too cool this way. Let me see what looks cooler. But yes, they all receive a lot of trips. Or what I'm doing wrong. Oh, I'm looking at the start station latitude. I don't I want to get the number of trips. Not the latitude. Yeah, so these are the most popular biking stations. And the last visualization demo I have is Data Studio. Who has worked with Data Studio? Good, we have some hands. We just made Data Studio globally available for free, everyone. So if you were wondering when it's going to be available in my country, it was available all in 22. Now it's av available for everyone. You can come to Data Studio, create a dashboard. So if you don't know SQL, you don't, know to know, you don't need to know SQL anymore. And you can just, if you have a BigQuery account, you can connect to BigQuery. Let me find public samples. How about we do, let's do names just to show, or let's look at the most popular names in the USA. This is a BigQuery table. I can give it my building project. And I can connect to any table on BigQuery. Uh, Data Studio will find the columns. And I can quickly come and create, for example, a bar chart of names. 
uh, what are the most popular names. This is the, there have been more males than females on this data set so far, but instead of looking at gender, let's look at the most popular names. The mo most popular names are James, John, Robert, Michael, William, Mary, David, Richard. Okay. Um, I could, but I could also run a filter and look it by state. So this filter will do states. And I can close this one. And uh, now I have an interactive dashboard. So for example, if I can only want to see California, I'm getting my results only for California or only for New York or only for Texas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I have the freedom to quickly create dashboards. I don't need to know any SQL. It will just be able to create it. And also, it has this beautiful share button where I can also make this dashboard public so anyone can come and run it and start analyzing this data. Um, Going back to the presentation mode, uh, the tools we were talking about here is BigQuery. Uh, you can analyze terabytes of data in seconds uh, just using SQL. And you can share data. Anyone can access your data set. With PubSub, you can share streams. With Cloud Storage, that I didn't review much, but with Cloud Storage, you can share files. Uh, and you have plenty of tools, Dataflow, Dataproc, Datalab, Data Studio, CloudML, Spreadsheets. That these are tools that Google provides to analyze and visualize this data. And you can also use a lot of third-party tools that will happily connect. Redash is my favorite open source dashboard, exploratory, and there's so many other third-party tools that connect to this. Uh, the whole point is how do we empower new ideas, um, not only in the ability to, to analyze data, but also in the machine learning world. Uh, having this data available will revol revolutionize things. Uh, we are keep adding data sets to the program. Anyone can share their own data sets, but these are the ones that we are grooming and taking care of and keeping updated, and we keep adding more data sets. If you want, if you need, if you want our help, or you are thinking that there is a very interesting data set that would help you to have here, please tell us. Yes, I'll let you take a picture of the email. We really want to bring as much useful data as we can here. Um, <laughs> you can share the picture with me later. Um, just to run a quick query here, I was looking at the number of rows we are sharing right now. Account star of all the data sets I listed previously, it's 26 billion rows. There's way more that we can share, and there's, there's way more that is being shared outside of the program. Uh, if you want to share a data set that you have on BigQuery, you can go and look at the data set, press share, and as you can share it with anyone in particular, you can share it with all authenticated users, and that basically makes it public. Now, no one will find it if you don't tell them where it is, so we also want to have a place where we can tell people, hey, my data set is here, it's, it's documented, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the world is using open data in many, many, many fields. Uh, there is more than 500 data portals, as, uh, as I, was, I was telling you. And especially if you are one of these portals, we would love to help to make this, your data sets more available. Uh, let people query them, combine them. Uh, we have the perfect platform for that. Uh, in closing, the, the two things to remember is that we have awesome tools to share and analyze data, and the public data sets program is here to support you. Um, oh, well, yeah, yeah, I want to wrap a clap. <laughs> uh, we have a lot more. Please clap, as Jeff Bush said. Um, <laughs> sorry. We have a lot more commercial uh, data sets coming, not only on the open data side. We are also announcing a lot of commercial partners. Uh, we also have and also this tool, data prep, to help load tool, uh, load data, make it a whole, the process a whole easier. 
Uh, it's in closed beta right now. And there's a lot more, many more interesting presentations that you could join, visualizing big data after this one, how to migrate your data warehouse to Google, uh, how to use Bigtable, BigQuery, and iCharts for ingest and visualize data at scale. And I'm really looking forward to advanced BigQuery features tomorrow. Oh, yes. Now you can. <laughs> Thank you.